Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new day of Road to DC World 2019. Thank you so much for being here, I really appreciate it. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to leave a like, it really helps out the channel. If you're watching live with me on Twitch, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Um, Kuro, you said you wanted to ask a question. Uh, Luis, HPK Tang, thank you guys so much for being here. And so, we are going to be reviewing um, an extra three decks, and now if you're watching this on YouTube, this video will probably be... Oh, Kuro, thank you so much for subscribing with Twitch Prime. Very, very kind of you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, good evening, Cookie Cookie and HPK Tank. Everything's good. Getting ready and hyped for Brazil. I'm very excited for it. I'm very excited to compete. And we'll see how it goes. Um, so as I was saying, if you guys are watching on YouTube, you are watching this on Saturday as the tournament itself is going on. You're live with me on Twitch. Today is Tuesday and the tournament starts on Friday. So I'm very excited. The first major tournament with Lost Thunder and none other than, um, than an international tournament. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And um, with these three decks, I feel like I will have covered um, most if not all of the like relevant decks or decks with potential um so yeah it should be pretty pretty cool yeah it should be pretty cool um by monday i will have a video by monday um well i will have a video for monday but on monday i fly back so on tuesday i will definitely be reviewing the results and whatnot so um yeah this should be pretty good. Um, Kuro, Zorark, Lycan. Um, creo que si colocas Weavile, te puede ayudar contra Blasefalon porque haces que limiten sus Magamadels o te da la opción de noquear con un Pokémon no GX. Um, de hecho, me parece una opción bastante buena si es Zorark, Lycan, Rock con Weavile. Ok. So let's get into the deck. As you can see, this is um, good old Gaskin, right? The deck that got popularized in Memphis. And we have Malamar with its Psychic Recharge ability, where you may attach a basic Psychic, well, you may attach a Psychic Energy card from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. So we use Malamar to power up the wide array of attackers that we do have here. Um, we have a Deoxys with Psychic and Power Blast. We have the new Giratina, which is the, I guess, impactful or interesting card here with the ability Distortion Door. Once you're in your turn before you attack, if this Pokemon is in your discard pile, you may put it onto your bench. And if you do, you put one damage counter on two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So it really helps out the math against some of the Pokemon. And then Shadow Impact, you deal 130 damage, which is a very solid number for a non-GX. And you place four damage counters on one of your Pokemon, which usually is not a big drawback because you can place them on Malabars, which are um, very fragile anyways. Now, we also have the Chimeko with Spell of Silence attack to limit what your opponent can do during their turn and as they can't play Pokemon with abilities from their hand and therefore it slows everything down. We also have Mimikyu with its copycat attack in order to copy opponent's attacks. We have Lunala Prism Star with full moon star to recharge attackers in case you don't have enough malabars and also the side storm attack which deals 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to all pokemon and we have the necrozma gx with its prismatic burst attack which deals 10 damage plus 60 more for each psychic energy you end up discarding and this is where three psychics makes for 190 damage so the one damage counter from creatina helps in knocking out things like lycan rock which have 200 hp and then we also have Dawnwings gx with ability invasion makes uh, for less necessity of the escape boards. And then we also have dark flash in order to hit for 120 and uh, no resistance. And also moon's eclipse GX dealing 180 damage and then becoming invincible next turn. We also have Marshadow to copy all of these attacks. And we have one to play lay for consistency purposes, along with a Marshadow to provide a little bit of disruption as well. So borderline, we have four Lily, four Cynthia, four Kuzma. Then we also have four Ultra Ball and four Mysterious Treasure along with two Nest Balls. So the deck ends up being super, super reliable, super straightforward and consistent along with the four Acrobikes as well. And then we have four Skateboard to give us retreating options very nicely and two Skateboards for recovery. 
10 basic psychic energy round out the deck and so let's jump into a ladder and i'll get to your guys's questions now the other two decks that i will be featuring is empoleon swampert with the addition of fairy alola nine tails and then the cdy zorg nine tails rather than empoleon um Ikuro no no focuses los nagana del más bien te enfocas en intercambiar dos premios contra dos premios y muchos el hecho que tu oponente tenga varios nagana del ayuda a que Weevil pueda derrotar a los Blasefalon con una Choice Band o inclusive sin Choice Band. ¿no? Ok, would like to go first for sure. Um, Greeny, do you agree with the support line in the Pocket Beach list of Gramble with four Tayanta, four Apricorn Maker, and two Kuzma? Greeny, I haven't read the Pocket Beach article. I don't have a subscription to Pocket Beach. But um, four Apricorn makes a lot of sense. Four Tayanta, I feel. Um, it's potentially good, but a little bit too much, especially if they get a little bit stuck in your hand. I feel like two, maybe three, but four seems a little bit too much. Um, okay, so we're up against White Kieran, so Kieran team is actually going to be super important here. So I'm going to go ahead and discard it, not only because it hits for 130 damage, but also because it, um, the damage counters it will place on the bench will soften the white Kieran for other potential attackers though. If we are able to just recycle um, Giratina every time, then we might not, well, we probably won't need any other um, attackers. So this game is going to be a trade-off of who gets, hmm, of who gets um, the, I guess the best attacks of, um, the most consistent attacks of, and whoever takes the first prize will certainly have a big advantage. Um, not getting energy in the discard pile is actually very sad. Um, I do have the Giratina, I can put it back. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and attach to the Inke and retreat it for the Deoxys. And then I think that's all I'm going to do for now. Next turn, I will Ultra Ball the Chimeco and the Marshall away for a Malamar. I will bring back the Giratina. Hopefully, he will have some Pokemon on the bench that I can use for um, my ability, including the White Curum, potentially. And hello, Blue Muffin. Hello, Henry. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, Ria Hisama, thanks so much for being here as well. Electech9, thank you so much. Um, Eggmar, ¿qué cartas sirven para hacer frente a los cefalón? Depende del deck. Oh, okay. So this is actually not built with Arceus, but rather with Meganadel. And I quite like that. I do quite like the combination of Meganadel um, plus Quaxar plus White Curran. That actually sounds pretty cool. Yeah, that actually sounds pretty cool. Eh, Luis hace 50 de daño, no 60, pero sí, a ese me refiero. Um, what thing am I playing this Friday, Henry? I don't know. I, I really wish I knew. Um, I definitely don't know yet what deck I will be playing. Um, okay, so we will be able to set up two Malamars. However, okay, so I'm tempted not to play the Ultra Ball here just because... Um, just because I think I will. Um, I do want to play it because it's one less Ultra Ball that I can use to potentially get like the combination of Ultra Ball plus two Psychics, which is going to be very difficult. It probably isn't going to happen. Yeah, we don't even get a single Psychic. Unless of the Acrobat, there's two Psychics here and there's not even one. Okay, I'll definitely keep the Cynthia. I don't get an Acrobike, I mean I can't get the Giratina, but now that this is not the Shining Arceus version, or not the Shining, the Arceus Prism Star version, this actually doesn't matter too much. Um, I can't get one energy, but that's just not enough. Right? That is just not enough, and then copying Freezing Flames serves no purpose for me, so I'm gonna get Drills and Mimikyu as well, and I'll grab the Malamar. No Psychic Surprise, but I wasn't able... If I had drawn one, I would have been fine, right? Because then I could Psychic Recharge and have the energy. Oh, my jeez. Okay. 
This is bad. This is a really, really bad spot to be in at this moment, at this point in time. So I'll grab the Inke. And then I will Psychic Recharge onto the Giratina. I really, I need a super lucky Cynthia next turn, but nothing I can do about it, right? It's gonna have to be, my opponent will probably get a knockout. So it's gonna be up to me um, to uh, to pick up the pace in this trade-off. Yeah. What the hell am I playing this Friday, Henry? So yeah, I really, really don't know. Um, keeping my options open. Um, and I never decide on a tag until like the Thursday or the day before the event. So it's still too early. I won't know until Thursday night. Okay. So let's Cynthia once again. I have lost quite a bit of supporters. Now I get triple psychic, but okay. And I get the whole psychic from the acrobat. That's actually what I needed in order to score the KO here. So I'll attach and I'll psychic recharge. So that was actually a very nice, like drawing five energy in a row is never a good deal, obviously. However, we are able to just shadow impact here for the knockout. We eliminate energy from play. My opponent doesn't have another white Kieran and we're in a pretty good spot now. We are definitely in a pretty good spot. The argument was trying to chain Diantha. Um, yeah, exactly, Green. It's like, the argument is to chain Diantha, yes, but that assumes that Grambles will always be knocked out, right? And one of the, I guess, beauties of the deck is that Gramble is decently sturdy, so it doesn't always go down in one hit, especially if you're playing bodybuilding tumbles. And so, um, that one turn where you don't chain Diantha, you also don't get a knockout. So, I don't know. I can see both sides of the argument, honestly. I can see both sides of, of how the card is potentially very good. Um, like, Diantha is a very good card. It's just, four seems like a bit of a stretch, in my opinion. Like, a bit too much for my taste. Okay, so I took the first prize. I have the infinite loop of Kiratina. So I just need to conserve a free retreater or energy in hand and that should be enough in order to um in order to get everything going you know um david no this is not my list for it um okay this guy has 160 hp though that's annoying uh but not the end of the world and my opponent has already benched a lele which is good news i'm gonna go ahead and attach to the deoxys and i'll just shadow impact I'll put the damage on the thing, okay. Um, as I mentioned before, I never choose a deck until the day before the event. Even if I'm leaning towards something, I never choose a deck before the event. So I like to keep my options open. You never know what like latest information will uh, come out that will make you uh, make a decision or change your decision. And so I'm keeping my options open and I will not make a decision on my final list until Thursday night. Yeah. Okay, so there's a Naganadel, double Naganadel now. So double Naganadel plus an energy attachment will allow my opponent to attack this turn with Volcanion. Yeah. Hello, Shuckle Sekro. Uh, Blue Muffin, is it better to run more Giratina instead of Deoxys? No, because one Giratina just recycles itself, right? And that's the really cool part about it. Um, so like playing two is good for consistency purposes and for pricing issues, but more than two is redundant because every time Giratina gets knocked out, it just immediately comes back if you need it, right? You don't have to worry about Rescue Stretcher, you don't have to play a big amount. And then having the two energy attack of Psychic for Deoxys is actually potentially useful. The one retreat cost is very nice as well. So there are a lot of things yeah, that make this card really good. Okay, so now the 40 damage ends up biting me in the butt because I knocked out my own Inke basically. I'm gonna go ahead and attach another energy and I'll Shadow Impact again. Yeah, I will Shadow Impact again. Hopefully no more spreading tactics by my opponent. Um, 
So that allowed my opponent, I guess, to catch up a little bit, but I have infinite Giratinas and I have the Deoxys, so this shouldn't be uh, any issue, yeah? And if my opponent decides to trade two for two, I am also okay with that, right? I am also okay with that. Um, how do I pick the deck to play? Um, like checking which deck is the best and which one is going to play more and all that stuff. Um, checking which deck is the best can only be done by a lot of practice. Yeah? You have to practice a lot, you have to test a lot, and you have to test every single deck. And then which one is going to be played more, that's only, that you can only make educated guesses. Right? You can never know for sure. Right? You can never guarantee that X deck or Y deck will be more played than a different one. But, um, so it's all guesswork. Yeah, regarding that, it's all cast work. Um, okay, so my opponent decides to use Tapu Lele here. If I use Necrozma, he will return KO with Naganadel, but I'll be trading two for two, and I'll still be ahead in the price trade-off. Another thing I can do is um, use the Guzma this turn. So I'll place the counter here, and I'll place the counter here. I believe I'm gonna target down then, yeah, that Naganadel because that's the bigger threat, right? That's a bigger threat. Um, it also limits my opponent's potential energy recovery for the future. And with the Choice Band, it's the only Pokemon that can reliably return KO on my Necrozma. Yeah? So that's why I'm going to target this guy down. And as long as I don't bench a GX and I keep taking prizes, my opponent will never be able to catch up to me. So this is good. Um, do you have a lot of cards? Do you buy them or buy buying boosters, Luis? I, I never buy booster packs. I only buy single cards. And yes, because this is like, because Pokemon is my job. I always want, and my goal is to win every tournament I attend. Um, I always, um, try to be ready and I try to have um, the most important cards readily available, right? So a place of Placephalon, a place of uh, Naganadels, the Lost March cards, um, Giratinas, I, I do have a lot of cards because I want to be able to make the best decision possible for a tournament and not pick a deck two weeks later and then suddenly the meta is just not great for it, but it's the only cards that I have, yeah? Um, how many cards decks do I usually bring when traveling overseas? I bring basically everything. Yeah, I travel with all of the via tournament viable standard um, cards. And I travel with like um, four, two of the, no, one of the ultimate card archive things that holds up to 400 cards and then four or five deck boxes which have uh, decks built. Yeah, that's what I usually travel with. And then um, extra sleeves, extra um, extra damage counters, a lot of extra sleeves for sure. Um, so based on my testing, is there a deck you think is going to be the most played? I mean, testing doesn't tell you what's going to be the most played, right? Testing tells you what the best deck is, which sometimes is correlated, right? But I think right now we don't have any tournament results to go from. It's all like this will be the first tournament this this tournament will be the one that dictates the meta right moving forward and so um i mean i expect blacephalon to be very heavily played because it has the surprise factor going for it wow i thought my opponent was actually going to use um, quagsire to take a knockout here okay so i don't have enough energy in the discard pile to ko the lele so I could simply use another, I could use my own Tapu Lele to find a Kuzma, right? Like that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna find my Tapu Lele, I'm gonna Kuzma, take another KO, probably on the other Naganadel, just to remove the energy recovery options. And then my opponent will knock out my Giratina and that's when I will bench my uh, Necrozma and I will, um, knock out that double Lele for game. And if that doesn't happen, then I just bring back the Giratina and attack whatever's active. Yeah. I should escape for this friend, I guess. And then I will Shadow Impact. And I'll place the damage on the Malamar. My opponent at four prizes, he cannot win the game next turn. 
right? He definitely cannot win the game next turn. And I get a Guthma off of my prize cards. So now I can actually, whichever, even if he knocks out the Lele, I can manually retreat, get the energy in the discard ball, and then bench that, Guthma kill the Lele, and win. Yeah. Thank you so much for the good luck wish, Blue Muffin. I appreciate it. And you like the deck that I'm playing? And the one with the Lola Neck, Shockle, and Grovel. Um, that's solid, but I do feel like the Zero I might have a decent presence and all their spread decks based on Top Coco, and that's where a Lola Executor kind of um, gets wrecked. And <laughs> hello, Pedro. Thanks so much for picking me. I believe in you too. <laughs> I believe in you too. I'm, I'll be very happy to see you once again in Brazil. Yeah. Are you at the airport or something? Are you like at the airport watching the stream? Or maybe even in the... In the... Ooh, Bench is a Palkia. Okay, interesting. Are you at the airport or at the... Or on the airplane? You are flying today to Brazil, right? Oh, you travel tomorrow, okay. You travel tomorrow, that's cool. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna promote the Giratina. I'm gonna hard retreat into whatever. And I'll bench this, and I'm just gonna go ahead and win. Yeah. So I'll retreat into Lele. Uh, thank you so much, Alvarez, Josh. Um, yeah, I travel tomorrow as well, Pedro. I arrive in Brazil at like 9:30 a.m. No, 7:30 a.m. from Miami. And I will Guzma KO the Palkia. So my opponent actually benching the Palkia ends up losing him the game. But I'm pretty sure I was going to win anyways. So yeah, GG. And yeah, why not KO with Deoxys? Um, I mean, does it matter? I wanted to keep the energy in my hand, Jeremy. I wanted to keep the energy the energy in my hand. I thought about KOing my own Deoxys just to get the energy into a discard pile because I was actually having, like I didn't win earlier because I didn't have enough energy in my discard pile to target the Lele earlier. Um, so I generally consider targeting down my own <laughs> Deoxys at that point. Okay, so this is, I think we're up against a spread deck, which is going to be very tough for Malamar to deal with. Yeah. Then I got an L, I have 2 energy on it at 10 damage. Deoxys would have KO'd with Psychic. Um, yeah, that is true, Deoxys would have KO'd with Psychic. Um, I mean, the difference between attacking, between attacking with Giratina or Deoxys doesn't matter. Keeping the uh, the escape board on the Deoxys, because it was going to get knocked out probably, right? Keeping the escape board on the Deoxys um, is definitely a lot more valuable than keeping the Giratina alive, because the Giratina just keeps coming back forever. Yeah, so I guess that would be the reason why. I didn't do it consciously, yeah, but keeping the... Ooh, two in case price. Keeping the escape board under the Oxys guaranteed that I would have like stability in the later game. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Amphi. What changes have I made to this list from the original Gaskin? I've. Oh wow. <laughs> I've only changed. I only. The only thing I did from the. I think. Maybe I did something else. The only thing different I did. Ooh, and the Giratina is prized. Um, the only thing different I did was take out one Deoxys and add in one Giratina. Yeah. Okay, if I had this keyboard on Lelia as well at that point, then yeah. Um, that might have been better. Yeah, but... Lelia was also a juicier target. I don't know. I was never going to stack enough damage from Giratina to, to lose the game. Because I could just start stacking damage on Lelia at that point. Okay, so I definitely need to get a stream of attacks off against this Tapu Koko and take a prize every turn if I'm going to win this match. And Tapu Cure might come into play as well. I played against this deck this past weekend at a League Challenge and oof, the Shrine is very annoying. Um, I actually won a game because of the Tapu Cure. Yeah. Why do I still play Deoxys, Deadly Bee? Because Deoxys has a one retreat cost and it has a, the first attack. And it's still a solid Pokemon. 
Yeah, the the first attack is useful. The one retreat cost is very useful, and one Giratina is enough because it just keeps coming back. Yeah, I did prize a Giratina this game, so that's the issue with just playing one Giratina. Um, but against my opponent's deck, the Oxus will be enough for now. Yeah, hopefully for now. TD Joe always gives the worst prize cards. I don't think so, Blue Muffin. I think like you're always gonna have. You play 60 good cards, right? You try to play 60 good cards in a deck. So you always have good cards prized, right? Or you always have really bad prizes. Because all the cards you play in a deck are hopefully very good. Otherwise, why are you playing them? And then it's easier to remember um, when you prize something important in a particular game than when you don't prize that card and things go, go on as normal. So yeah, Deoxys is still a pretty good card. The Oxus is still a really, really good card. Okay, my opponent not spreading this turn is actually very nice. Yeah. Um, and I think I fear the Weavile spread much more than the Coco spread. Is that right? Oh, uh, the Stretcher is important though to get back potential the Oxus. Um, is that right? Do I value? Yeah, because Weavile just spreads 120, 180 damage, right? Whereas Tabu Goku spreads 100 damage. So KOing the Sneasel, I believe, is a much stronger move here. Yeah. Um, I should play either Zorrock or Alola next with Septel since a lot of Ultra Beasts are going to be played. Um, those are good options, yeah. I do have the cards for Hello and Victor. I do have the cards for Zorog. I don't know when I will, um, when I will be. Um, I mean, I don't know what I'll be playing, but I am definitely contemplating Hello and Victor and Zorog Black and Rock as options. Yeah. What are the top three decks I expect to do well in Latam? I mean, I think Zorg is guaranteed to do well. I think Malmar is going to do well. And I think Blasepolon is. Like those three are very safe and easy choices, right? If you want to like guarantee points or do really well. Um, those three decks are decks that have solid matchups across the board. They're very good strategies. They're very powerful decks. Um, once you priced all four of your DCE Blue Muffin, I mean, it sucks, yeah, but it's also possible, right? Just because it's unlikely it doesn't mean it's impossible. And hello, Jobro, thanks so much for being here. Um, okay, so this is Weavile, Garb, Coco, Buzzwell. Interesting deck, for sure. Um, this is a show. I was very lucky to top deck that Guzma. <laughs> I was very lucky to top deck that Guzma, but the issue with, I mean, I guess I can get the KO on the Trubbish, right? Without any issues here. Um, and I can keep the energy in the discard pile. The question is, do I want it in the discard pile? Or do I want to try and, yeah, I think I just want it in the discard pile. I'm definitely not using Necrozma though, right? I'm definitely not using Necrozma this game. Um, so again, set up another Malamar, Marshall, and Chen Meko are not good attackers. Um, the Lunala Prism Star is a really good attacker against my opponent, but with only access to two Malamars, I definitely don't have the resources to power it up. Okay, so I'll be in Sledgehammer turn. I feel like I'm still gonna Psychic Recharge onto the Deoxys, but I will use Psychic. In case my opponent doesn't have an energy for the puzzle, then I can get a guaranteed KO next turn. Yeah, so that's why I am powering the Deoxys up. And then if my opponent decides to Guzma take down a GX, that's fine. If he decides to Guzma take down a Malamar, that's also okay by me because then I just return KO. Yeah, I'm not concerned about which Pokemon my opponent knocks out. I am concerned about taking a prize card every single turn. And there's a sense, yeah, so there's a chance my opponent whiffs the energy. Yeah. Your brother got top eight with a Lola Nex at an ARG. Seems pretty good. Yeah, Lola Nex is really good. How's Mill for Brazil? Um, I mean, I've never liked Mill strategies myself. Um, I'm sure Zoar Control is a solid deck. Um, but Naganadel being self-sustaining and getting energy from the discard pile, I think that really hurts any type of Mill deck that wanted to show up. Yeah, I do believe um, Naganadel should be the final nail in the coffin to make it to where 
you know Naganadel is going to be played. I expect Naganadel decks, um, not necessarily plus Evelyn, but Naganadel decks, oof, wow, great for us, um, to be a big part of the meta. And so um, that makes energy removal strategies basically useless. Yeah. Um, Coco Lele spread is pretty difficult for Blood Cephal. And any good strategies there? I mean, the strategy is <clears throat> limit your bench as much as possible and make sure you are getting a KO every single turn. That's the only thing you can do. Yeah. There's no other approach. Yeah. You can try to focus on the non GXs, but then again, it else don't KO Tapu Coco. So that makes it very hard. Um, okay. So. Okay. I am definitely not looking forward to a. Lele plus counter energy drop. However, the Tapu Koko was the attacker. So my Deoxys ends up surviving thanks to my opponent whiffing the energy for the puzzle. He does get a spread off, but that's fine. Yeah, because I'm just taking chaos, chaos, chaos. And I got lucky with my prize. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Rayleigh. Six months in a row. Thank you so much. Now you're a blue table mon. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Um, thank you so much. Okay, it seems like my opponent is not happy <laughs> with how this deck is working. Um, Deadly, if you play Mule, you could Mule their energies from the bin, but that's not even really good for Mule against Naganadel with Gurafric. Yeah, so Gurafric does give you an option, but Naganadel, like, against Naganadel plus Cephalon, you can never trap something, like, too reliably. Yeah. You can never trap something too reliably because sure, you can remove two energies to a loss zone, yeah? But as long as they have one, Naganadel puts it onto itself and then it can retreat. So if you focus only on Naganadels, then you are fine, yeah? Yeah, it's definitely an option, but it's just not very reliable, I think. What is mill? Um, mill is uh, milling strategies, aka they try to deck you out in order to win, yeah? Okay, so Sector apparently lost the feed, but I believe I am still online and everything's working properly, right, guys? I do believe everything is working properly, everything looks stable. Yeah, everything looks stable, so it's just Sector who might have lost connection for a second. Okay. So, my opponent gets to go first this time around. Uh, we got a decent hand, decent-ish. Um, I think I'll start Mimikyu to have the option to Filch by the end of my first turn. Don't know what I'm up against, don't know if Deoxys will be useful, so I'm not gonna bench it. We see a Slugma. Which narrows down my opponent's option to like Bramble, uh, perhaps, perhaps Zork, to the Ultra Ball. Uh, peaking red card, so I assume Zora control now. And there's a Lily. Okay, so the Dawn Wings might be very important. Yeah. <laughs> We're still here, Sector. We're still here. Makaru GX would be cool. Yeah, Makaru GX to finish off um, a game would definitely be cool. Okay, so this is some sort of Zora control deck because of the peaking red card. So I have to be very careful. Yeah, I do have to be very careful. <laughs> Hello, Sombra. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, so we're gonna lead with the Acrobite. I'll definitely keep the Guzma, right? The Guzmas are super important. And then we'll bench the Deoxys. I think I'm gonna bench the Marshadow. I might, might have gear up break, actually. I, oh, no, I'm not gonna play the Marshadow. That's just, Lily is so bad, but the good one was also so bad. Yeah, I'm gonna march out. You wanna win a game, you have to take risks sometimes, right? So that's what we're doing. Okay, so this is a much better hand to Lily off of. Yeah, and I definitely won't be needing the Lunala Prism in this game, I don't think. So we'll set up the first ink gate and we'll Lily for eight. That's pretty solid. Yeah, that's pretty solid. Okay. So eight cards into our hand. We do find a Cynthia. Um, the Chimeco would be really cool here. Chimeco would honestly be really cool. So we've got found. Um, 
the carp. Um, uh, do I go for my third ink? I don't think so. If I had found the escape board, I definitely would have gone with the chai neko, I think. Okay, so we're just gonna filch. We have double Malamar, we got an extra energy. Um, how about unknown? <laughs> no. Not a fan of unknown. I assume my opponent is, going, is actually running the Giraffe Rake, right? I definitely assume my opponent is running the Giraffe Rake that we have been talking about, and that's the spot that my opponent wants to conserve. Because the Giraffe Rake will eventually, like, Giraffe Rake can remove my, um, my energy from the Lost Zone, right? Can remove my benched energy to the Lost Zone, rather. Okay, so there we see the uh, Zork. I actually top deck the other energy I need to start attacking. Right, so I could take down a Zerua. I actually wouldn't mind taking down this Logma, but that requires um, more work. Okay, so <laughs> Mr. Haley Tornado, the 10 games you played, eight were Malamar. <laughs> I can see how that's probably not very nice for you. Um. Okay, so I think I do lead with a KO, right? I do lead with a KO, and I'll set up another NK. My Marshadow is available as well, so that's good to note. And yeah, I'm, I guess I'm gonna go for a knockout, right? I could go for a Cynthia. That conserves a Guzma, and I could end up taking down the Slugma. But I do have another four, right? I do have another, well, not another four. I do have another three Guzmas. We take the first prize card that frees up something from the prizes, which might or might not be useful. Um, the stretcher, decent, not the best. Um, but in order to get a return KO on the Zork, we are going to need Malamar Energy and Marshadow, right? Or Escape board, Necrozma, Energy, and Malamar. So, some very specific combination of cards, which is not something that's very um, good. But they should, like, I really needed to control for that engage because if my opponent knocks out a Malamar right here, I would definitely be in trouble. Yeah, I would definitely be in trouble simply because. Um, I would definitely be in trouble because the energy would be in on the Deoxys and I wouldn't have access to double Malamar if that's what I end up needing. So my opponent will Lele for something. I assume a Cynthia of sorts to replenish his hands perhaps. Um, it is a Cynthia. Amphi for you, it's only spread and shrine decks. Um, okay. And there we see the riot she's beating. Okay, so, I mean, at worst, I can filch. Um, but yeah, this is gonna have to be a really big Cynthia, so I'm not gonna look. I'm actually not going to look. Now I will look. Uh, that's almost it. Uh, yeah, it's almost it. If I find an ultra or a marshal here, then Okay, we get another try. Uh, so close. I'm missing the escape board. I am missing the escape board. Mace Windrew, thank you so much for choosing to use your Twitch Prime subscription on the channel. Thank you guys so much for the support today. Very nice of you. Um, okay, so... I mean, I'm definitely keeping the microphone, right? We can't get a KO. We cannot get a KO. So I, what I could do is Black Ray, right? I could Black Ray, or 
I could use Giratina. So it's one of those two options. It's one of those two options. Will my opponent be running the Choice Band Kukui? Stadium combo? I assume he will. I think I'm gonna black right here. It's not the ideal setup, but it keeps energy on the field. It pretty much guarantees me two prizes next turn. Like pretty much. As long as I draw an energy or an skateboard off of the Lily. Uh, if I had gone on a skateboard and I had four energy KO Totor, that would have been pretty broken. <laughs> Or if that had been Watch Out instead. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna Black Ray. Yeah, that damages those guys. Yeah, and it sets up, most importantly, it sets up both Zoroarks to potentially be knocked out. And even if he goes a Zorola this one and promote a brand new one, I am one energy away from knocking out the brand new one. So that's also very useful. Yeah. The Makari will probably signify a Zorola, or it might signify a KO in the Cruzma. That could also be the case. Yeah, that could also be the case. And Julian, thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad you will be rotting, not rotting, rooting for me in Brazil. Okay, so this will be interesting how this plays out. Like we have a really solid setup, but it's also not quite there yet. And especially not with a Lily in hand and just two mediocre-ish attackers. Yeah. I guess Giratina is not mediocre. Should Zorotax run Tsunoburo at the moment? I think Tsunoburo is always a great inclusion into Zorark, and it just, it almost guarantees a Malamar matchup. And it makes opponents like misplay, um, it foils their plans, it can really limit them if they have four benched Pokemon and then they can't bench an extra one. I do think Tsunoburos are great tech in Zorark and potentially more techs, you know? It's just realistically, Zorark is the only one that can reliably use it okay oh my gosh we're gonna see the tapu cure we see the tapu cure gx okay that's a good top deck honestly that's a good top deck i am going to fail it now i do rely on drawing energy plus a skateboard in order to get that malamar out of there Ugh, not quite not quite. And now I find, right? Now I find the Ultra Wall, but it's just a teeny tiny bit too late. And my hand is actually not very good. That's the reality. My hand is actually not very good. Um, this amount of energy guarantees that I will be able to knock out a Zork. My Malamar is definitely going down, right? Yeah, my Malamar is definitely going down. Very underwhelming turn for us. There's nothing I could have done to change it. Yeah. Um, is Latam the first tournament with Lost Thunder? Yes, it's the first major tournament with Lost Thunder. Um, Dalton, if top 22 in an Aegis type is like Europe did, you would be able to go to Brazil. That is definitely um, unfortunate. Dalton, and I'm sorry that's the case for you. Ooh, the Latios is very nice for my opponent. Gladius is definitely very nice for my opponent. And yeah, this nest ball has got to be a fourth NK. If there's no fourth NK, I'm gonna be in a lot of trouble. Well, if there's not a fourth NK, I'm gonna have to grab Marshadow in order to have my opponent target that. Um, okay, the rest of stretcher definitely helps. Um, I wish I had paid more attention to know if the ink is in there or not. Uh, uh, yeah, it's not. Okay. So, darn. Uh, uh, I think I go for the Marshadow then. Right? Because that will distract my opponent. No, I can't go for the Marshadow. Can't go for the Marshadow. I have to fail this. And then... Ugh, this is tough. This is very, very tough. I mean, I, I basically have to win, like, P2 
painted, right? So, okay, so what I should do is bench the Giratina and power that up because I cannot lose two Malamars next turn. I can only lose one of them. And Malamar could single-handedly, uh, not Malamar, sorry, Giratina could single-handedly get me all the chaos I need here. So, okay, I'll play one of these over here. I could play both, but I think keeping one for a potential Malamar is good. So this is the plan. I will Prismatic first, KO the Zorark, then he KOs me with the Latios, right? And then I KO the Latios with Giratina, and therefore he cannot win the game because I will not punch any G-axis. And then I will goose my KO the Lele. Yeah, that's the plan, all right? Yeah, if Sudo, if Sudo, Sudo is never a dead card. It's always doing something for you. Yeah. And hello, realgames.ca. Eh, rompe papo. No me parece que esté tan roto, porque son dos stage uno sin algún sistema de soporte como Alola Nightes o Zoroark. Okay, so my opponent needs a choice band, right? Needs a choice band. And he would likely want an Acerola to heal that Tapu Lele at some point, right? So once this guy goes down, I think my goal should be to get that extra Inke. Because I will definitely need triple Malamar. There's the Acerola. Yeah, there's the Acerola. Imagine if my opponent doesn't have Choice Band though. Imagine if my opponent does not have choice band. That would be fantastic. My opponent does not have the choice band here. That would be fantastic. But of course he has it. Okay. So I return KO. Right? Without benching a GX. Or maybe I do bench the Necrozma. Maybe I rescue Stretcher the Necros now and use my abilities on that. How do I do this? Let me think here. How do I guarantee the win? I have Knockout on the active, right? A very simple, very straightforward. I have Knockout on the active. But then if PKOs a Malamar, I am in trouble. Therefore, what I need is to guarantee that I will have access to double Malamars plus the... Oh, I messed up again. No, I didn't. Okay, I didn't. I, well, I kind of, but I didn't. Um, I do have to stretch her for the NK. I believe... I mean, my opponent might play Judge, of course, but with the cards that I have in my hand in this very moment, I am guaranteed almost to win this game. How many energy do I have? Three. So I don't think I'm going to use the other Psychic Recharge. Because I do need three, potentially, right, to win the game. In case Zorak takes this guy down... No, I guess I, I can afford to put another one. I'll leave it, though. Will I regret it? I could end up regretting it if my opponent plays Steel Blower, so I'm just going to put the energy. I think this should be fine. I believe this should be fine. So I'm gonna Shadow Impact. I'm gonna play the four damage counters on the Mars Shadow. And now my opponent cannot win the game this next turn because I don't have a GX attacker. Yeah. He will definitely KO my Giratina. And then I have enough cards in my hand to respond with a Mars Shadow or with a Necrozma. If he's playing Weakness Policy and he targets down a Malamar, that's how my opponent would be able to win the game. Why don't you put four damage counters on Giratina? Probably would have been better. Brazil is this weekend. Burrito boy, uh, Mr. Soda King. Top three decks for Brazil. Difficult to say. Um, but I think uh, Zorak decks, Malamar decks, and Blacephalon Nagana Dill decks, those are very solid choices. Yeah? Those are very solid and safe choices. Um, Team Bible going, would I want to judge in decks be a good move with the current state of the meta? It depends, Team Pi. Like, you might catch some people off guard. Um, but for example, in my situation, there's very few instances where you really want to judge rather than Cynthia to find more of your resources or 
Lily or Guzman, right? To target down the right Pokemon. And especially if you don't have um, something solid like uh, like Lele to search for it in non-GX deck, then it becomes even less reliable, right? Or if you're not running Macargo. So it all becomes less less reliable, you know? Rescue Stretcher, Latios, DC, Guzma, Keo Inca, and Mars Shadow. Oh, that's actually true. Thank God, Rory. That's actually true. So I actually just opened up a play for my opponent to beat me by putting the four damage counters on the Mars Shadow. That is very true. I did not see that. I did not see that. The four damage counters should have just been on the Giratina. I should have seen that. <laughs> That's definitely my bad. I did not contemplate that possibility. Okay. So smooth over. Taking a while. Hopefully my opponent is not going to figure out. It's not going to figure that out. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Okay, so there's a trade. Stretcher. Okay, Crushing Hammer. My opponent is trying to just eliminate energy from the board. I think my opponent might have smoothed over for that card specifically, which is weird. Um, there's no way he can trap us. We have the Guzma. And if he decides to go with the Ranguru, which might have been the reason why he benched it. Um, no, he just goes for the right. Just kidding. Perfect. Doesn't even KOing a doesn't even KO a Malamar. But it wouldn't have mattered. His win condition was weakness policy plus um, KOing a Malamar. Right? Because that didn't happen, then there was no way for my opponent to win the game. Okay. So four energy on the Necrozma, my opponent realizes that he's doomed, and there we go. There we go. <laughs> Team 5 Pokemon, sorry about the ads, but the only way to guarantee that you won't have ads is um, with a subscription to the channel. And so guys, that will be all for Malamar, um, Gascan rather. Uh, still a pretty strong deck, definitely a contender for Brazil, I would say. It's super reliable, it has the non-GX option uh, with the Oxys, Giratina, Mimikyu, Lunala. And it has the big GX moves in Dunwings and Necrozma to deal with big threats. So I really like the deck. I think it has potential for Brazil. And I haven't explored it yet since Lost Thunder hit. So that will be all. If you're watching YouTube, don't forget to leave a like. It really... Um... Uh, Ronan Boys, yes, we were just talking about that. I gave you the win condition by putting 40 on the Marshadow. I, I gave you the win condition. I did not realize it at the time, but you are right. Yeah. You are right. I am going to continue stream, guys, so don't go anywhere. I will be right back with another deck. Don't go anywhere, but if you're watching YouTube, leave a like. It really helps. <laughs> be right back, guys, in just a second.